Okay, next up, it's our eight story. But just before we get to the eight story, um, I have to say a big thank you to Ashley Hunter, who's uh, a regular 10 by 9 and uh, she donated by a Patreon this evening. So, you know, if any of you, just saying, just saying, if any of you, you know, want to get a name check, there you go. Um, okay, it's our final story of the evening, our eighth story. Um, I have to make a terrible confession. I very uncharacteristically made a complete mess up and this story should have been told about two years ago in the black box. So big apologies, Heather. I hope you've forgiven me. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so you take it away. A woman jumped out from the side of the road, waving her arms to get us to stop. We were driving an enormous ancient motorhome that was almost empty of diesel, literally running on fumes. My partner Gillian said, we can't stop. The garage closes in five minutes. I said, just slow down and we'll make sure that she's okay. This was in France. I was hoping she spoke English because this was gonna be a swift exchange. We slowed right down. I ventured, bonjour. She was overjoyed. Oh, thank you for stopping. I've broken down. Have you got jump leads? I'm sorry, we can't stop. We'll come back in 20 minutes. No, please stop. She started to plead. I leaned out the window. We'll be back. She just shook her head, utterly miserable. She knew there was no chance of us coming back. That service station was a little further away than we thought. The fuel gauge was now well below empty. It looked very likely that we were going to run out of diesel. I had visions of us standing at the side of the road, trying to wave people down. Instant karma. We were both very silent. You know that really nervous, anxious silence where neither of you are breathing? Just before the recrimination stage. What a relief when the service station finally appeared. Now that we had a full tank of diesel, we could go back and help the woman on the road. Dear lover, she was still standing there and her wee face just lit up with delight to see us returning. She told us to turn off the road and drive a few meters up a wee lane where she had parked. The lane opened out into a field. Suddenly, from nowhere, a crowd of men appeared and came running over to us. Oh no. She was just the decoy. This was a trap. This was exactly the kind of thing we would warn other people about. How stupid and naive were we? The men all crowded around the motorhome, forcing us to stop. My heart was jumping out of my chest. Terrifying images of how this would end flashed through my mind. Then I said, hang on a minute, Gillian. They're all wearing cycling outfits. Mad Axe murderers don't usually wear lycra. One guy was knocking the window. Have you got jump leads? <sighs> Massacre averted. It was just a breakdown. They were cycling from London to Paris on a big charity event and their support van had broken down. The woman, Emma, was the van driver transporting their luggage tools and food. We got out and went over to have a wee look at the broken down van. At this point, all of them, except one, wandered away and lay down, flat out on their backs on the grass. We could hear rather dismissive murmuring like, mm, it's just a couple of women, Irish or Welsh or something. I felt angry at their demeaning attitude, but there was also a creeping sense of shame. They were probably right. Sure, what could we do? What did we know about fixing a van? Gillian asked, what happens when you try to start the van? 
Look, love, it's just the battery. We need jump leads. Okay, well, we've got jump leads. But I'm just wondering, when you turn the ignition, did the engine try and turn over a wee bit? No. Look, it's absolutely dead. Can you just get the jump leads? Yes, yes, of course. But I'm thinking it's something else if the engine didn't even try to start a wee bit. He put his hands on his hips, exasperated. <sighs> We've trained for months for this. If we don't get going soon, we'll just be disqualified. These were his words. But inwardly, I knew he was thinking, oh, shut up, woman. Would you just get the freaking jump leads? Gillian went to the boot of our motorhome and started lifting out various boxes of prick. I was left with Mr. Grumpy. He wasn't in the mood for jovial chit-chat. I joined Jelly at the back of our van. She said, I'll try the jump leads to calm him down, but I don't hold out much hope. I don't think the battery's the problem. It sounds more like the starter motor. We'd driven a lot of old jalopies in our day and had learned a wee bit about starting problems. We drove our van tight up against their van, nose to nose. That sense of intimacy, of almost touching, just highlighted the distance and tension between Mr. Grumpy and us. Poor Emma was walking about, wringing her hands in despair and giving us looks that said, I'm so sorry about all this. I'm sorry he's such an ass." Gillian jumped out and went to connect the two batteries with the leads. Mr. Grumpy snatched them off her and said, Leave it, I'll do that. When he had connected both batteries, I switched on our engine and Gillian turned the ignition to start their van. Nothing. We tried again. I revved up the engine to give more power. Nothing. Just the thundering silence of defeat. Mr. Grumpy jumped into the driver's seat. He was determined that this van was going to start. We went through the whole procedure a few more times with the same result. If testosterone, frustration and anger could have breathed life into that van, it would have started on the button. The other dozen or so guys lying down in the grass had popped up their heads in hopefulness only to be bitterly disappointed. I felt sorry for them. I could imagine the months and months of preparation, training and anticipation for this amazing event. All for nothing. Meanwhile, Jilly was looking into the engine and saying to Mr. Grumpy, you see, I think it might be your starter motor. He just looked blank utterly deflated, unable to pretend that he even knew what a starter motor was or even where it might be in that whole conglomeration of annoyance under the bonnet. Gillian asked him, have you got a hammer? He looked at her, <laughs> you're not going to take a hammer to the engine. Well, it's broke anyway, like you're not exactly going anywhere fast. Emma, meanwhile, proudly presented their toolbox. Yes, she exclaimed, we do have a hammer. She rummaged through a random assortment of tools, which I noticed included wallpapering scissors, a hole punch for leather, and a hammer. Gillian said, look, do you see this? This is your starter motor. I'm just going to head it a week down with the hammer. And as she was about to give it a bang, Mr. Grumpy yelled, careful for God's sake. He was one aggravating, undermining, ungrateful yap. I felt like saying, right, 
that's enough. Come on, Gillian. We could be parked up by a sunny beach with a glass of wine in our hands instead of listening to this. But she patiently mustered on. She lifted her arm and get, banged the hammer on the metal casing. It did sound a bit grim. The lying down men were shaking their heads in disbelief and tut tutting. She asked Grumpy Bum to get in and turn the ignition key. He huffed and puffed, smirked, <laughs> like this was going to do any good. Flipping waste of time, stupid bloody woman. He turned the key and at the same time, Gillian banged the starter motor with the hammer. Flip me, the engine roared into life. His eyes nearly popped out of his head. The broadest smile filled his face and he looked like he might cry. He got out of the cab and punched the air. He jumped up and down. He hugged us, shouting, oh, thank you, thank you. You have no idea what that means. The lying down men sprang up onto their feet and came bounding over in disbelief and joy. Emma was in tears. We got smothered in hugs and kisses. Photos were taken for their website. They were on the road again and back in the race to Paris. <laughs> thank you. Oh, Heather, thank you so much. That van, that's the, I think, is that the second story or third story we've had out of that van? Well, that's at least the third story out of that van. <laughs> oh, such adventures. Brilliant. Um, I believe I saw the hero of that. Ah, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to hear, Gillian, we would love to hear your version of that story someday. It's pretty similar. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. Well, look, thank you so much. It's great to see you both. Um, can't wait to get you back to the black box. And what an array of accents we have had tonight. <laughs> I didn't realize you were such a good mimic, Heather. <laughs> thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo! Too strange to be applauded for sitting in your living room, huh? <laughs> Broadcasting to the world, though. Well, this is it. <laughs>